So before going about the Ayurveda and the uh, bridging Ayurveda and modern medicine, we need to understand the basic difference of both the signs, right? So Ayurveda has been written years ago, right? And it's completely an experiential, intuitive, and holistic science. When I say experiential, it's been observational. The people have been observing the things after giving the medicines and what, uh, how it is getting better, etc. But modern medicine is completely experimental, analytical, and reductive, uh, have a reductive reasoning. It believes in the reductionism. It totally believes how deeper we can go up to the molecular level and how we can know that how these molecules are working. In some manner, it is good. You are getting the idea of one particular thing, but in somewhere, you are neglecting the concept of a holisticism, a systems biology, right? But Ayurveda, on the other hand, talks about the holistic approach. And its principles are quite similar to the nodal theory of systems biology, which is a booming uh, topic of nowadays in science, right? Uh, from the last few years, I would say. So how, and this is the modern, this is the Ayurveda, both different way of functioning. How the integration, what integrative medicine says? Integrative medicine is also supportive to the holistic approach and say, we right now we are just treating the cure, we are just treating the patient. The patient is coming with the disease and we are curing it. We are just doing the management. But we need to think about P4, thing is coming now uh, in which the p one p is for predictive preventive personalized and participatory but uh, triple p triple pm is also another terminology is given in the integrative medicine so all these four things predictive preventive personalized participatory ayurveda has a heritage of knowledge about all these things what is missing in ayurveda is a scientific validation in the present time correct how it can be fulfilled by the evidence-based modern science. If we can use the tools and technology of the modern medicine to prove them, is it the things which has been written that time, the environment was very different, the people lifestyle was very different. Uh, is it still validated? Is it still validated in today's life? If it got uh, if it got validated, integrative medicine in all these sectors, the predictive, preventive, and personalized medicine is going to have a lot of contribution from Ayurveda. So in this uh, chain, I would I will like to stop here first and would ask Superna if there is any question, Superna. Uh, no, ma'am, no questions. Still. Okay, so I shall I continue? Yes. Okay, so as I mentioned, uh, Ayurveda has the knowledge, but lacking the scientific validation. Modern has the validation, but there is no concept of the predictive and the preventive medicines, right? Uh, so if they, they both come, can come together and can do something different, which helps the healthcare overall. Few examples are there. The first is the IO genomics. So uh, whatever the articles or research I, I have I will propose here or will show here, every research has been taken from the uh, PubMed Central, which is a known journal. No bogus research article has been provided here. And all the information has been taken, which is research-based. Right. So the Ayur genomics. So here, what is the integration? Here, the integration is from Ayurveda with genomics. Ayurveda has a concept of prakriti, what we call a, uh, every person has a, a different body constitution. And according to that constitution, people are prone to some diseases, uh, should uh, uh, are prone to some diseases and have some personalized approach for the nutrition, for the lifestyle, etc. We know that, but we haven't proven it how it is happening in the body, how we can divide the whole population in the three uh, group. And this research is happening in BHU still. I am not aware where it is gone till now, but still going on. So all the world can be divided into three or seven populations. And we can predict that, you know, this person could be prone to this disease. On To, uh, to just check whether actually it is something relevant or it's just like, uh, you know, the dogmas, the old the anecdotal thoughts which has been written in the Ayurveda. So this article, which is written by Bhavna Parashar, ma'am, uh, Ayur Genomics and et al. Uh, so it says that if 
they have done the ge genomic study of, they have taken the uh, group of individuals, they assess their prakriti and they divide into the three uh, groups and then they assess the genotype, genomes of those groups. So few findings I'm just sharing here because I cannot share the whole article. A gene called CY uh, CYP2C19, which is responsible for the metabolism and detoxification. It has shown in the study that it is down-regulated in kapha and up-regulated in pitta. And in the literature, it has already written, kapha has a manda agni, which is called a slow metabolism, and pitta has a tishna agni, which is called the high metabolism rate. Natural killer cells, CD56, are act and activated B cells are higher in the kapha people group, which shows that it has a good immunity. And in Ayurveda literature, it is already written, Kapha people had a better Oja. Oja is a concept of the immunity. If you see the inflammatory gene, they have seen that inflammatory gene are upregulated in the Pitta. Uh, sorry, uh, inflammatory gene were upregulated in the Vata type people. And protein sequence involved in the oxidative stress pathway are upregulated in the pitta type of people. So pitta people are those who have the uh, uh, tendency of getting aged early, right? If there are a lot of free, ra free radical metabolism production more, they will aging will happen early, right? So these all the concepts are very much coherent with the Ayurvedic prescriptions. Uh, it means that Ayurveda is Ayurveda concept of prakriti has been validated by the genomics. The second, another branch is coming now, nutrigenomics. The research has, the integration has done with the nutrition science and they got to know that Ayurveda has a very specific uh, recommendation of do's and don'ts in the terms of the bodily constitution, which is Prakriti, which can help him, help the person to stay healthy for a longer time. So this is the uh, article, which is a very good article, how you can use the Ayurveda uh, in the concept of the nutrigenomics for the personalized diet approach. Third, Ayurgenomics and the predictive medicine. So you know what the Ayurgenomics is. Prakriti is the very essential principle of Ayurveda and you have to include Prakriti in all the aspect of uh, uh, treatment as well. Uh, in the predictive medicine, as I mentioned, that the Ayurveda says that each prakriti has the sense, uh, has the proneness of few diseases. If you are able to identify that person, and you are if you are able to personalize the diet and lifestyle of that person, you can see the sensitive gene which we have proven by the Ayur genomics can be remain in the latent phase. It will not become uh, aggravated or start showing the disease conditions. Next, Ayur Genomics and the Precision Medicine. This is the article which is published in the Cambridge University. I have taken this article uh, uh, because this is uh, Cambridge University is uh, known for its rationality and not uh, saying anything which is not relevant. And they also talk about the Ayur how Ayurveda can help in the precision medicine. The concept of Ayur Genomics uh, can be uh, can use can be used and we can directly uh, make a very precise medicine for the person. Next, this is all about the treatment. Okay, we have, we got the treatment, but there is a problem with the Ayurvedic medicine also. There is no known uh, uh, mechanism. How do they work? How did uh, What they go and do in our body? At least we know these things about modern medicine, right? This is the other argument what we uh, generally listen. So if you see, there are a lot of... Uh, uh, researches happen are happening which shows that the drugs the single drugs have are are having a lot of properties uh, in the modern terminology which for which they have been recommended for example shiri shadi shiri shadi is very good in the allergical uh, anti allergical medicine in ayurveda and we call it dushi vish medicine also and how it what is the mechanism of this medicine you can see it has a glycosidase inhibitory effect and uh, and of ethanolic extract of antihistamine drugs right if you go in detail of this article you will see the beta cell stabilizer property and etc etc in the same way you will see that brahmi uh, that bacopa monary has the antioxidant property so in this way here the integration with the biochemistry people come along and they tell see uh, how the Ayurveda drugs are working in the synergistic manner, not by extracting one molecule, but as a whole. This is for the single drug. Coming to the uh, multiple drugs. 
So mechanism of drug of single drugs and the uh, Ayurveda and the experimental research. So you can say here what uh, Ayurveda is integrated with the zoology department. What they have done, they have taken a one formulation of a herbal medicines. Uh, this is Dhan Mantram Kashayam and Saraswata Arish, which has been mentioned as a Medya drug in Ayurveda. When I say Medya Dravya, it means it helps in the neuromodulation and uh, brain, nervous system in short. As I said, we cannot explain Ayurveda terminology exactly in the modern way. Uh, so this study shows what they did in this study. They integrate with the zoology department uh, in the drosophila. They induce the Huntington's and the Alzheimer disease. And then they give this Dhanvantram Kashayam and Saraswata Arish. This saw, it's a very interesting study. I would suggest please read that. It, this uh, research also happened in BHU only and uh, one of my junior conducted this research and in the result what we saw that uh, Dhanvantram Kashayam and Saraswata Arishtam uh, the group which have got these medicine have the longer uh, have increased the uh, longevity so and the uh, symptoms of the Alzheimer and Huntington's also comes down but of course this is experimental study now the, pharma, uh, uh, the phase 2 trial phase 3 trial are required Ayurveda is a conservative treatment. Here, the integration of Ayurveda is happening in the oncology. I already mentioned in the third case how the oncology people are coming together for coping up with the side effects, for the conservation of the other uh, overall quality of life of the patient. So this is the example of the integration with the oncology. Integra Ayurveda and clinical trials. That was a time then when there was no Ayurvedic uh, um, treatment, Ayurvedic protocol were designed by the clinical trials. But now, a lot of clinical trials are happening. Uh, we are registering ourselves on the CTRI portal. And then the, on the, by the guidelines, stroke guidelines, care guidelines, uh, following all such guidelines, we are conducting the researches, right? As the modern people are doing, as the evidence by based science are doing. So these are the examples of the clinical trials, which shows uh, Shunti. We know this is uh, Zinjibar officinale. This particular drug has shown a very good effect on the COVID-19, uh, transmission of a COVID-19 uh, patients. And this was a single arm study, non-randomized control trial. Uh, one example, lot of other examples are there. Uh, Ayurveda and the regu strict regulation. As I mentioned in the starting, that Ayurveda integration is not only about coming the therapies together, but the policies, regulation, everything has to be integrated in a manner for the better outcome for the patient. So if you, there are a lot of issues with the safety, toxicity studies of Ayurvedic drugs. So a lot of protocols have been decided now how the drug has to be standardized, how the uh, pharmacovigilance uh, centers have been established. So these are the things which are happening in Ayurveda in an integrative manner with different pathies. Now, Ayurveda and delivery of drugs. Here, the Ayurveda is integrating with the technology also. After getting validated by such researches, uh, this is the same, I showed the example of the Shirish, uh, Shirish drug. Uh, and this is, the, this is the same drug which has been uh, delivered in the forms of the sprays. So this is the uh, integration with technology that you cannot take Shirish is not that good in taste and all. And if you take this nebul by the nebulization therapy, the effect of the Shirish was better than uh, better than the steroidal medicines what we take for our inhalation, right? Inhalers may. So this is one uh, way where Ayurveda is integrating with the technology also. Ayurveda and mental health. So this is my own research. Uh, uh, which I have done in the integration with the psychology department. So Ayurveda has a very, very deep knowledge about mental health. And this is the challenge in modern medicine that still uh, mental health people are not getting very well addressed or having a lot of side effects. So as we say, Ayurveda talks about the prevention. Even in the mental health, we can talk about the prevention. So my this particular research, which I have done in the concept of the validating the scales of uh, Manas Prakriti or the mental constitution of the body, with the regression model, we have given the formulas also, which is in the respect to the Neo-PI scale of the psychology. So this way, the different streams of science are coming together and collaborating with Ayurveda, making all his, herit all his uh, this um, past knowledge evidence-based. And now this evidence-based knowledge can be repeated on the multiple people for the better outcome. So this is the few of the examples I wanted to give for the integration of Ayurveda.
Bye.